And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel, proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Store. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your thoughts down below, and if you're new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. So, the Commonwealth Games has come and gone. Today, as I upload this, is the closing ceremony. It's been a fun event to cover, and I hope you guys have, um, you know, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I've been tweeting all the schedules, tweeting all the results. A lot of people have messaged me to say uh, it's been handy and made it easier to follow. If you have tuned into it at all, I hope my uh, sort of preview of the tournament kind of made it more interesting for you guys to know who to look out for. And, you know, kind of reflecting on that video, I think most of the names I mentioned definitely at least meddled. Um, you know, the likes of Aidan Walsh, etc., who I tipped for gold without much trouble, went on to win gold without much trouble. Um, and there were a couple of other names that I mentioned in there as well. Obviously, Delicious Ori getting a gold medal for England at Super Heavyweight. I predicted that. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of the names did perform. But today I wanted to do a bit of a a review of the games and how I felt it went and um, kind of the positives and negatives because I did say that I did feel there were some negatives to the event but there are also a lot of positives as well and I do try to be more positive than negative in these videos so I'll just give a, an overview on kind of how I how I saw things the um, start with the negatives to get them out of the way nice and early I felt like the officiating wasn't great. Um, I didn't feel there were too many outrageous scores, more outrageous scoring of rounds and scorecards that later impacted the results of fights. There were some fights where a fighter got the decision and I agreed with it, but one of the rounds may have been particularly close or they may have clearly lost the round and they still got it. Um, there were a lot of fights where I didn't necessarily agree with with those those scores that were being returned and obviously you see the scores in between each round so you're able to kind of follow it and there are a lot of bad scorecards in my opinion there weren't too many outrageous results the one that really sticks out for me as a robbery was that Amit Pangel versus Patrick Chin Yemba fight I thought Chin Yemba won it I think everyone that watched it thought he won it the commentary thought that too when I was on Twitter a lot of people were deeming it a robbery as well I thought Patrick Chinyemba was really unlucky. And then Amit Pangal obviously goes on in the final against Kieran McDonald of England and looks like the old Amit Pangal and produces a brilliant performance to win gold and it kind of will then go forgotten. So I felt like the officiating wasn't great in terms of the judges. I felt in terms of the referee and it was even worse. I feel like a lot of the referees really didn't have a hold of the action. And for me, there's just no sort of in-between. They're either too involved and disrupting the flow of the fight or they're not involved enough and then it's resulting in injuries, uh, specifically cuts being opened up. It's not too much of an issue for the females because they obviously wear head guards, but in the male um, aspect, there's so many cuts from head clashes where the referee really could just intervene earlier and stop it from happening. And I feel like they don't get involved early enough. I, I don't think they're able to look at the ebb and flow of the fight and predict these things when I feel like they really should. So that was an issue for me and there's just so many cuts where we're all sat here now watching amateur boxing saying it really should go back to head guards which no one really wants but if it if the tournament isn't going to come down to the best win in the fights and it's going to come down to who doesn't get cut then the referees really need to get more of a hold on this. The other negatives for me were just and this can't really be helped but there was just such a big gulf in levels between a lot of the opposition. And because it was a home nations tournament, um, if over here in the UK, they they put obviously all the home nations fighters, apart from super heavyweight and heavyweight, to basically have you know three fights to get to the quarterfinals, and then in total, most of the home nations fighters were having five fights across the tournament. But what it meant was like just pick this guy for example, Reese Lynch, who went on to win gold for Scotland. He had to you know come through. Uh, Shiva Tapa and Jonas Jonas, two of the most experienced um, amateurs of, of recent times. And he had to come through those guys just to get to the semi-finals. Whereas he got to the quarter-final stage, and at the quarter-final stage, there were a lot of fighters just making their debuts from countries that are obviously much more under-resourced, countries that don't have the investment that, that boxing has in terms of the facilities and the training and the coaching, etc., and it was just a little bit like, well, what's the point in this? You know, fighters like Reese Lynch were having to have really tough runs to the quarterfinals when there were some fighters who were making their debuts in the, debuts in the quarters and were either getting knocked out or beaten quite 
quite comfortably. So I just felt like maybe the seeding could be structured a little bit better to make it a little bit fairer all around. But I understand it being a Home Nations tournament, they wanted to make sure the Home Nation fighters got kind of the lion's share of the, the TV and... Yeah, just also for the fans and stuff as well, make it easily accessible for the for the fans that want to support. So I'd say those were my negatives. We'll move on to the positives of the tournament. Um, the home nations excelled. I thought they were all fantastic. Really, really good and really impressive. So that was enjoyable to watch. Um, and that was kind of the, the sort of main highlight for me, just seeing that, you know, sometimes when a new Olympic cycle starts, we see a real drop off from the team before. Um, and I feel like, you know, there's a lot of talent here to be excited about for when it gets to Paris. And what it did mean in this tournament as well is we saw a lot of GB teammates going up against each other, fighters from the home nations, you know, taking them on each other in semi-finals, in quarter-finals, in the finals, in really important bout bouts. And these guys will have to go back to Sheffield together, you know, be in camp together. But, you know, it really showed, you know, just how competitive they were and how much they wanted to fight for their country. So yeah, it was. Um, there were a lot of positives as well. Um, I feel like there was more kind of negatives to talk about, but the positives kind of outweighed it, in my opinion. And I didn't speak about as many positives, but those factors, you know, we saw some really good performances and a lot of breakout stars that I'm going to talk about later in the video as well. So let's get into the way I thought I'd structure this rather than just throw in loads of information at you is do it in, a, in an awards ceremony almost, the sort of unofficial Commonwealth Games Punch Perfect Boxing Awards proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Store. Um, I'll start off with the one that's kind of the, the big daddy of all awards, the fighter of the tournament. And for me, this is Reese Lynch at 63.5 kg. You guys will know Reese from, from being on my channel. I noticed throughout the Commonwealth Games, the views on that interview kind of went up. So people must have been searching him in YouTube and my video coming up. Um, and the reason I go for Reese is, is his run. He had to have five fights to get to a gold medal. But, I mean, three of those fights, I'll talk about his run. So, obviously, starting off in the round of 32 against Tim Onari um, from Kiribati. Again, he was not an experienced guy. That was a nice sort of warm-up bout for Reese to come into the tournament and just, you know, get the get the feel for the tournament, get the uh, get the juices flowing and shake off any potential rust or whatever, but just ready to, to sort of compete. He then went into the round of 16 against Shiva Tapa of India, who's a five-time Asian Championship medalist, uh, a World Championship medalist in 2015 in Doha. He's competed at, you know, the Commonwealths and the Olympics. He's actually the youngest Indian boxer to qualify for the Olympics. Um, he qualified for London 2012 and lost in the first round to uh, Oscar Valdez. But again, you, you kind of hear the names that he's mixed it with in the past, the major tournaments he's competed at. You know, this guy is, you know, really experienced and Reese Lynch is having to face him in the round of 16 outpointed him and actually beaten quite comfortably in my opinion as well then moved into the quarterfinal matchups where you can guarantee yourself a medal and that came against Jonas Jonas who from Namibia when you looked at the seeding and the, you just looked at the draw for the uh, 63 and a half weight category he kind of stood out on paper as potentially the favorite because he went to uh, 2014 and got a silver lost to Josh Taylor went to 2018 and won gold so he's got history at the Commonwealth, so it's a tournament where he really seems to step it up and thrive. And Reese Lynch is having to face him in round of, round of uh, the quarterfinal stage story after having beaten Shiva Tapper already. Reese Lynch goes and beats him as well. Seems to really struggle with Southpaw's Jonas Jonas. Reese Lynch beat him quite comfortably again, in my opinion. So he's gone through two major medalists, two experienced guys at that point. Then gets to the semi-finals where he takes on White Sanford of Canada, who's not as accomplished as those guys, but Canada, who I mentioned in my preview, have just got a really developing team and their t their team seems to be getting stronger and stronger. And Reese Lynch outboxed him, so that's like a legitimate contender in his division. He outboxed in the, in the semi-final stage, gets to the final, and it again gets very, very tough for him as he takes off Lewis Colleen from Mauritius, who's got uh, been to the Commonwealth Games since 2006, basically got a medal in 2010, went to the Olympics last year, has competed at major tournaments around the world. He's much older than Reese as well, so he's got so much more experience on him, mixed it with uh, kind of names that have now gone pro and achieved things in the pro ranks as well. And Reese Lynch goes and gets the better of him. Obviously, a sort of turbulent final round for him, but he was able to build up enough of a lead in the first two rounds, in my opinion, to get the victory. Um, 
and win enough of the portion of the third round as well to to sort of have his say and not make that a wide third round that could have swayed things. So, Reese Lynch, boxer of the tournament because of the run he had to go through. No other boxer in the tournament, in my opinion, had a run that difficult. There's obviously a lot of other names that won a gold medal that, for me, could be in the in the argument as well. You look at Aidan Walsh, who barely broke a sweat, to be honest, throughout the tournament, apart from the third round of the final. Had to come through a lot of domestic rivals as well when you look at him coming through um, Harris Akbar from England, who's been the sort of best English boxer of the year so far with his performances at the Europeans earlier this year. Um, also his his win over uh, Garen Croft from Wales, who's a very talented fighter. So yeah, he just had a really tough run as well and, and performed really well, Aidan Walsh, and looked really comfortable in doing so. But again, just not quite as difficult a run as what Reese Lynch had, where he had to go through five fights, three of them against former major medalists, three experienced guys, and dealt with them really handily. So for me, Reese Lynch is boxer of the tournament. It's the strength of your run, not necessarily the performances for me. You know, if you can go through and beat a lot of experienced guys like Reese did, you deserve to be in the conversation. But there's so many fighters that deserve to be there as well. Now move on and we'll talk about the performances of the tournament. Um, for me, two really stand out. And don't get me wrong, again, there's a long line of performances here. But the two that stand out for me, I'll talk about the runner-up first because there is a runner-up and a winner for this one. The runner-up for me would be Delicious Ori against Nigel Paul at Super Heavyweight. Um, Nigel Paul uh, medalled at the World Championships last year, been to the Olympics in the past as well, um, has actually shared the ring with the likes of FA Jagber, etc. So, very experienced guy, very capable guy. And again, just on experience and looking at the draw, he looks like the potential favourite to win the whole thing at Super Heavyweight. Delicious Ori needed to deliver one of the best performances of his amateur career and he delivered that. He was sensational, punch perfect performance, really, really good against an experienced guy and I was really impressed with him. So he's in the conversation. But the guy that wins this award for me is someone that could easily be fighter of the tournament as well, but it's Sam Hickey of Scotland because I was looking at his draw at 75kg middleweight and you just always knew he was going to cross paths with Lewis Richardson. And at the Europeans earlier this year, Lewis Richardson defeated him by 4-1 decision. These two are both in the GB setup. Lewis Richardson is kind of preferred a little bit at the minute at middleweight, having a little bit more experience. But this could completely turn things around. As Sam Hickey came out in the first round and was absolutely terrific, uh, showed the, the much sharper counter punch in, was almost inviting Lewis Richardson on him, and was just, you know, picking his shots cleaner, landing the better punches, and hurt Lewis Richardson at the end of the round, which forced a standing count. Coming out for the second round, Lewis Richardson always adapts and always seems to come on strong in the second and third. And he started the second all right, but again, Sam was just picking the better shots, you know, being a real sharpshooter in terms of his counter punching, and again, just hurt Lewis Richardson and put him out of there and secured a, a stoppage victory. Fantastic performance from Sam in a bout that has so much significance in terms of potential GB selection down the line for potentially world championships, potentially the Olympics as well. That was a massive win to get revenge over Lewis Richardson. And not just in a close fight where it still sort of goes up to up for debate then for GB to pick who they like. No, Sam went out there and he stopped him brutally in two rounds after, you know, forcing a standing count in the first and dominating that first round. It's a massive statement from Sam Hickey. Again, who could be in the fight of the tournament conversation? His win over Callum Peters, who I'm going to talk about in a little while, were sensational as well. So Sam Hickey, for me, performance of the tournament against Lewis Richardson at middleweight, fantastic performance. And congratulations, Sam, on your gold medal. More than deserved, fantastic campaign from yourself. Moving on then to fight of the tournament. Again, we saw a lot of really good fights at the, uh, at the Commonwealth Games, but a man and uh, that was just involved in so many exciting ones was Taylor Bevan. And I want to talk about his bout against Aaron Bowen in the semi-finals. Because that fight, Wales versus England, again, could have some um, ramifications for GB selection for the 80kg weight category moving forward. But what a fight. I mean, Aaron Bowen had surprised a few by coming through Ashish Kumar in the quarterfinals. That was one of the best fights of the tournament. Aaron really sort of laid it all on the line in that fight in the final two rounds. Taylor Bevan had sort of been punch perfect, really, in the, in the couple of... Um, 
prelim bouts and the quarterfinals, he'd really not put a foot wrong. Had won a fight comfortably, even won a fight by stoppage as well. He'd been sensational. And he finally met his first bit of real resistance in Aaron Bowen. Taylor had a speed advantage. He had a skill advantage as well, in my opinion. But Bowen made it close purely through, you know, coming out there and just laying it all on the line and letting his hands go. Bevan took the first round with a much crisper jab and just beat him Bowen to the punch. The Englishman responded really well in the second round and the third round it just came down to, to Will. Who wants it more? And because of his speed advantage, his skill advantage, Bevan was able to come through it and ultimately 100% deserved the decision. But him and Bowen were just swinging for the hills in that final round and they both really wanted it. And for me it was one of those one of those bouts that kind of had you up on your feet and applauding because it was sensational. So credit to Taylor Bevan and Aaron Bowen. It was an awesome fight. Lewis Richardson versus uh, Billy Lapelaine as well um, of Guernsey. Brilliant fight. I know Billy works with Team GB and the England squad as well, but terrific matchup. That was enjoyable. A lot of the home nations fights were really good, but for me, Bevan versus Bowen stood out as the fight of the tournament. It was absolutely terrific. Move on now to knockout of the tournament, and um, there's kind of two for this award. I think the better knockout was um, Billy Polkinghorn of Australia when he knocked out the uh, the fight of Rosalie where he just absolutely obliterated him and it was went all over social media. It was a brutal knockout. You don't see many of them in the amateurs, but Polkenhorn throws with ill intentions, was loading up on the right hand, was loading up on every shot and produced a brutal knockout. Now, this knockout wasn't as, as brutal, but I think the significance of it earns my knockout of the tournament award. And that was Tyler Jolly versus Danny Hilton of Jamaica because that now goes down as the fastest knockout in Commonwealth Games history. It, it was over in basically like 15 seconds. It was a brutal body shot that folded Hilton over. Jolly landed one, came out with real intent and was landing big from the get-go. But Hilton looked bothered by one of them. Jolly just followed up, got him out of there, and it was you know it was over before it had even begun. So for me, just in terms of the significance of that, I think Polk and Horn was a more brutal knockout. The shot that Chin Yemba landed on Winwood as well of Australia was brutal, but I felt the stoppage was slightly premature. But... Ultimately, Jolly, the significance of his knockout over uh, Hilton of Jamaica, that's got a word in the award as well. Now move on to, what should we go for, breakout star of the tournament I want to talk about. And for me, this was Callum Peters of Australia at 75kg that ended up getting a silver medal. He was just fantastic. He didn't meet too many... Um, um, he, di he didn't face a lot of great opposition along the way, but coming into this tournament as a 19-year-old... No one really expected much of him. He hadn't performed at any sort of major tournaments in the past. No one had really heard much about him. But it wasn't so much the nature of his victories being relatively comfortable, some winning by knockout as well. The thing that was most impressive was just his style, his ability. He was kind of starting a little bit slow in the first round of each fight, but then just seemed to find a groove where he was switch hitting. He was... Uh, you know, sort of turning the angle just by, by swiveling his whole body and able to land as he was doing it and making his opponents really struggle to land cleanly and he was picking nice counters. It looks really flashy and a lot of people, even Aussie boxing fans have said to me, you know, he stands out as someone that they think, you know, a major tournament down the line won't just get a bronze medal, can actually go on and compete and potentially, you know, do better than that. So at 19 years old, I think Callum Peters, you know, stay on for the rest of the Olympic cycle. It was funny, um, after his victory, maybe the quarters of the semis, I can't remember which, but he got out of the ring and Eddie Hearn was there to congratulate him. And I think Eddie Hearn even had a look at Callum Peters and thought, you know what, I'm trying to build something out in Australia at the minute. Callum Peters is a guy that I've got to keep my eye on. So he was my breakout star because I hadn't heard anything of him before the tournament. And afterwards, I know a lot about him now, and I'm actually excited to see him go into future tournaments. And when I do these future previews and stuff, I'll definitely be sat there with Callum Peters at the top of mind. So he's definitely my breakout star of the tournament. One that could be mentioned, and he's actually going to be my pick for one for the future, is Taylor Bevan from Wales. Because I'd obviously known about him going into this tournament as a home nations fighter. But he wasn't someone I kind of highlighted um, to do well at this tournament necessarily. 
but he's just growing and he's developing. He reminds me a little bit of Pat McCormack, a real sharpshooter with a great jab. He had such a speed advantage over 99% of his opponents at 80 kg. Picks his shots beautifully and doesn't shy away from a tear up. And there were fights where he was just comfortable boxing on the back foot, but there were some fights where he needed to chase it and show a bit of initiative. And he showed that against uh, Aaron Bowen at the times against Sean Nazarini as well. I thought he was brilliant and he's one that I look forward to in the future that I think has got more of a pro style than an amateur style. So if he doesn't go on to achieve much at the major tournaments, I'll be more excited about him turning pro because I think he's really exciting, Taylor Bevan. And if he'd have won the um, if he'd have won the gold medal in the finals against Sean Lazzarini, just fell short. I thought Lazzarini took the first, Bevan won the second quite comfortably, and then the third, it was very close, but I thought Lazzarini just pipped him. Bevan didn't quite deal with the size and physicality of Lazzarini, who's a very strong boy, so he just struggled with that a little bit, but I think experience will show Lazzarini's much more experienced. But Bevan really kind of looks like a favourite to take that 80kg spot for the GB team moving forwards, and I thought he was brilliant, but I'm just more excited with him for what could come in the pro game as well as the amateurs. He was brilliant, so Taylor Bevan deserves a mention, especially as one for the future. Now to do the final award where I'll just kind of talk about my team of the tournament. This is obvious that, you know, most people say it'll be Ireland because they finished the top of the medal podium by quite a margin. They were sensational. They did have a lot of experience in the team, which I felt a lot of the other teams necessarily didn't have with the Walsh um, siblings. Um, whereas I felt like some of the other teams were very new and we had a lot of youngsters, a lot of under 22s in, in many of the teams, the Croft Twins and Bevan for Wales, etc. For England, there were a lot of new faces. Um, but Ireland are obviously a standout for that. But for me, um, I think in terms of the female boxing, India was sensational again. They just dominated. I mean, Neetu was absolutely brilliant. I thought she was spectacular. Um, Canada are a team that I told you in my previews to look out for. They really improved and they and they got a high medal spot in the um, in the in the medal tally as well. So they were sensational. But for me, and as good as Wales were as well, the standout team for me, obviously it should be Ireland, but the standout team that really impressed me was Scotland. Team Scotland. Seeing the picture yesterday of the three medalists from from yesterday and Reese Lynch, Sam Hickey, and Sean Nazarini, um, just they were brilliant, all three of them, and I kind of feel like the saying, you know, success breeds success. Seeing Sam Hickey get that win over Callum Peters then inspired um, Sean Lazzarini to go on and beat Taylor Bevan, which then inspired Reese Lynch to go on and uh, beat Lewis Killeen in, in his final bout as well. And it just seemed like, and you know, we're not even mentioning the likes of Tyler Jolly, Matthew Mahale, uh, etc., that finished just short. You know, the gold medalists, though, were just so good. And when I mentioned, you know, fighters of the tournament, I mentioned um, uh, Reese Lynch and Sam Hickey. I think both of them are top five candidates for that award. I just thought Scotland were brilliant. It's the first tournament in 60 years where they finished above England. That deserves a special mention as well. They were just fantastic. I'd say England were probably one of the more disappointing ones, actually. I thought Lewis Williams and Delicious Ori that both won gold were brilliant. I thought they were absolutely excellent. But I felt a lot of the others kind of were a little bit disappointing. I think Harris Akbar got a really tough draw going against Aidan Walsh, who I said was a massive favourite. Um, Niall Farrell, really disappointing against Jude Gallagher. I'd actually be looking at Niall Farrell's place for Paris and, and potentially seeing what else is available because I don't think he deserves to go on his last few um, tournaments. I don't think he's been all that impressive. Kieran McDonald was absolutely brilliant. His win over Jake Dodd was absolutely tremendous as well. Stop Jake Dodd. Um, but I feel like he disappointed me a little bit against Amit Pangal, but Pangal is arguably the greatest Indian male amateur of all time, so I'm not going to put too much stock into that. But overall, a great tournament for the home nations, especially Scotland and Northern Ireland. And Wales were brilliant as well with Rosie Eccles, etc. But a good tournament. So let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Let me know if you want me to cover more amateur boxing. I'm open to recommendations. Please let me know your thoughts. Hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you next time.